Welcome back, everyone. We are really happy to have you with us again. Uh, I'm also really happy for uh, what's going to follow. So we will be hearing from um, educators, corporate executives, stakeholders from all over, all over the world about best practices from the US and Europe to empower female tech entrepreneurship. And we are going to hear from uh, Dr. Robbie Melton, who is uh, the Associate Vice President, President of uh, the Smart Global Technology Innovation Center. We are going to hear from uh, Rebecca De Sancho Mayoral, who is an investment manager um, at the EIC Fund and RNI Investments. And we're going to hear from Yves, Yves Psalti, who's the Senior Director of Microsoft Azure AI Platform. So I wanted to welcome Dr. Melton, who is uh, a favorite speaker of ours. And she's going to talk about uh, bridging the gender digital skills gap and other things that have to do with uh, boosting female tech entrepreneurship. Dr. Melton, the floor is yours. And welcome. And ladies, gentlemen, it's seven o'clock in the morning in Nashville, Tennessee, but welcome and good afternoon to you all. I'm Robbie Melton and I come to you all teched out. I'm going to just give you my story, my journey and my passion about technology. As you see, if you can look closely, I have on my Google glasses, I have on all of my coated clothes and jewelry and ring. Why? Because we are all connected. And I wanted to present to you a little bit of the past, the present, and of course, the future of technology. And ladies, this is our world. I'm going to leave you with empowerment of what if. What if you could think of something that can connect us all? And as I share with you, I want to motivate you. I want to inspire you because we are now connected globally. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. And as we move in and out of technology, sometimes it'll work and sometimes it doesn't. But as a problem poser and a problem solver, you take every opportunity to make it happen and to learn. So for my 15 minutes of fame, I want to share with you how you can grab your passion and make it into your career. So with that, I'm sharing my screen and I'm going into my PowerPoint and I'm going to just start off with my emoji. Now, all of you need that little emoji and just in case you're wondering, hmm, what is an emoji? Well, it's what we call a lookalike of yourself in a digital form. And with that, as I start, my presentation, let me share with you. My goal and my passion is to look at all technology. I am not here to promote any company. I'm here to share with you, there are products, company that will enhance teaching and learning. So as a college professor, an administrator, and as a advocate for empowerment of women, I'm here to share with you my journey in terms of reinventing oneself into one's passion. So with that, everyone, yes, you know all about me. And if you don't, you know how to find out about me. But the one claim of fame, I am the first Apologist. Apologist? Yes. I study, go all over the world to curate mobile devices, new technology, 
apps for the enhancement of teaching and learning. Boy, I have reviewed over 30,000 apps, whether they are from Android, Apple, Samsung, Windows. If you need an app, I'm the person for you. So what if, what if all of this technology right there in your hand and within your phone, what if you can improve not only your life, but everyone around? So my journey started with that what if, that pathway into helping faculty around the world, helping students, helping companies to understand the impact of technology in education. Why? Well, the why is, as a female, there are only 19% of us worldwide into the various STEM college area. And yes, you notice I'm a woman of color. And you'll also notice only two, 2% 2 of women of color are represented across the STEM and tech force. So that is my why, and that is why my passion is to look at all of the new jobs that are coming up to make sure that we are represented across all of this digital platform. So what if, what if things that are connected we can help design, help create, help manage, and how about become an innovator in this new digital world. So with the rise of all of this connected technology, that's how I started. I just started with those two words, what if. So what if my fingernails were coded and they are, where my fingernail polish can detect, date, rate drugs. You're gonna go, what, date, rate drugs? What if I could take any liquid and stick my finger in and my nail polish would detect date, rate drugs? Ladies and gentlemen, that is now. So I look, I don't claim, I look at all of this wonderful, amazing technology to see, my goodness, what is going on where I can now empower not only myself, but other women. So yes, you now have smart nail polish. What if I could wear technology? Well, we have Raspberry Pi, and if I move in just a little closer, you see I wear it as an earring. I'm here to share with you, technology is so available. I now have jewelry, rings, watches, but they are computers. They are one of the most powerful, amazing pieces of technology that we need to embrace and learn how to use it for the better good. All of your telemedicine, on behalf of the medical community and wellness and fitness, we have in our hands, on our phones, on our watches, and even a bio tattoo that monitors our health and provide on-time data anywhere in the world. So what if and what if I thought, hmm, how about if I start helping people to come together and look at smart technology? So my journey started with going, talking, meeting people. And on behalf of my university, in which I am, and happy to say, ladies, um, one of the primary investigators for our Apple partnership for the historically black colleges and university across America, where we are empowering our faculty and staff with everyone can code and everyone can create. 
And thus, I want to share this video with you so you can take part and get excited. Hello, world. And give me a thumbs up if you can hear it. So this is the first computer that I coded on. In the beginning, my biggest challenge was not having access to a computer. The first line of code I wrote was bouncing board. It would bounce around the screen, hit the edges, and then come back again. I think the first one was like a, a to-do list. It was a to-do list. And I remember the first time I did it when it worked, and it was like magical. I can do anything with code. Anything I can think about, I can do it. And be able to experience power outages every day. So let me see if I can just do a simple algorithm that can provide the electricity cut of time. It shouldn't cost life to give life. But if we compress all these health guidelines into small movies. I'm one person that saw a problem and created a solution to stop or assist a woman in domestic violence. What we wanted, what we needed, didn't exist. So at some point, you just say, okay, well, let's do it ourselves. Let's make an app. Well, when I first start an app, I have to have a plan. We start with that little glimmer, that seed of a new, fresh idea. There's this fear of code, like it's so hard or it's inaccessible, but actually it's not. Someone who doesn't even know code at all, if they really studied some simple Swift code, they would probably be able to understand it. Anything's possible, and it all comes from that first step. Launching that was a big moment, actually. I told everyone about it. I'm like, download my app, it's on the App Store. I was dancing. I called all my girlfriends that I cried to. It's such a crazy feeling because it's so many emotions, so many wishes, so many dreams. I always tell my students, do you have better electricity? My son made it. <laughs> he built it. And the girls, uh, is he single? <laughs> By the end of 2016, one million women will have a safe birth due to the safe delivery app. <laughs> People come together in public spaces. It creates a kind of happiness. It creates a kind of like healing effect for the soul. Don't touch my coat! Dear Kira, young people like you are tomorrow's leaders. You inspire me and give me tremendous hope for the future. Michelle and I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Barack Obama. These tools are something that we desperately need when trying to change the world. I think the more people we can learn to code, learn to build apps, the more problems can be solved. I feel like I'm creating stuff that can actually change the way people live, which is super awesome. I want to be this amazing coder, this off-the-chain senior developer where everybody comes to me as like, can you fix this? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, and I go in there, I'll just type up the code and blah, blah, blah. Damn, damn, damn. And like, wow, you can do this. Yay. <laughs> and again, that is our partnership of empowering our underserved communities across the world, not just in the United States, but across the world. And everyone can code and everyone can create. And this fall, we have a partnership with various communities and schools throughout Africa in which we are going to offer coding and creating online. So as I wrap up, I would like to share with you that again, in terms of being a female, a woman of color, and a person with vision of what technology can do, I want to leave you with this vision. Look around. Technology is all around us. We use it in every aspect of our lives. It enables us to do amazing things. But what if we could go further? What if we could go beyond the screen? where your digital world is blended with your real world.
now we can. This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. I have an idea for the fuel tank. New ways to share ideas with each other. How are things going your end? I just put the images in one drive. Perfect. More immersive ways to play. New ways to teach and learn. So put the new trap in the place of the old one. Now what? And tighten here and here. New ways to collaborate and explore the places we've never been. Look at this formation. Let's take a closer look. And new ways to create the things we imagine. Because when you change the way you see the world, you can change the world you see. This is Microsoft HoloLens. And I thank you, and I stop at this point. And yes, in my world, I get to see all types of technology. And you're talking about some amazing technology. Oh my gosh. So again, I'm here to share with you with my HoloLens 2 lenses, teaching, learning, technology and in the empowerment of women's welcome. And just like today, I wanna thank my host and all of my panel members because we have the ability to connect. You all, it's around 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's 7.30 in the morning here. And here we are able to share, inspire, motivate each other, so we're only what? A click away. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for this inspiring talk. I have two questions on the chat that I would like to pose to you. And one is, what is in your experience the most useful tool you have used to empower uh, girls and women who would not have the opportunity to get into tech to uh, either give it a go or, you know, equip themselves with the skills they, they need to do it. So if we could choose one tool, what would it be? It would be a smartphone. It could be an old phone. I don't care. As long as you can upload and download apps, this powerful tool has more technology than Apollo 14 space rocket that we sent into space. So the one tool would be a smartphone where you can design apps, call, communicate. Oh my gosh, smartphone. Do you have any examples? I mean, how the girls you meet or you hear from have used their smartphones and the, the applications uh, that are in those smartphones to create something new? Yes. With the technology in the smartphones, just putting this in your hands, you can code, you can create. They just need a pathway to see that even if they're looking and playing even games, those games, someone had to design it, someone had to code it, and when you share with them the opportunities and the possibilities that even right now, I can point to you some various apps, and again, it doesn't matter what type of phone you have, they then see in their hands, they have a tool that not only can communicate across the globe, but a tool that can now help them to be an innovator. I like what you say because 
um, we talk about why girls don't go into technology, but we don't need to talk about why girls uh, don't need, uh, don't use smartphones because they do. So they if, do. if a smartphone is, uh, you know, the path or the bridge to a, a new career a new learning path then uh it's it's really empowering to know that that we can use that and i would like to ask you why do you think there is this gender gender uh di digital skills gap i mean why are uh, aren't more women and more uh, girls interested um by default from their young age without anyone telling them so uh interested in a career in tech what do you think are the barriers? It's going to sound so simple, but it's role modeling. I mean, look at this conference. I mean, this is wonderful. This is a blessing. We see women. And again, if you don't think role modeling is major, hmm, as you're looking, they need to see women in technology, women innovating. And again, we're still going against that stereotype. And there's nothing wrong being in the kitchen. But if you're in the kitchen, innovate, create. And that's what we need. And we need to let our young girls know it's okay if someone calls you a geek. It's okay if you're into technology. It's okay for you to be a leader. So I'm here to say it's simple, role modeling and empowering our young ladies. And that's what I do all over the world. Because do I look like a geek? Well, I am. And I think it's a, you know, it's a sign of honor. I, I, I would use it as a word of honor. Um, so what's your role model? Well, my role model basically, and I say this with passion, it's when I'm on panels and I see other women. And when I say geek in America, it's called technology geek, someone who's just doing technology. So my role model is when I can now sit back and listen to the other panels, because I always go, wow, oh my God, I didn't know, but what if? I have one more question from the chat and I will combine it with uh, a question of mine. Where do you see a gap, a niche that uh, is going to get filled as soon as we get more women in tech? For example, uh, we were discussing with uh, our panel yesterday about femtech and how we have seen this field exploding from uh, uh, women innovators getting into the industry. So. Are there any other fields or niches that um, you think uh, need some more attention and that they are going to thrive uh, with women innovators in the game? Yes, I see a gap in what I call emerging technologies, things that have yet to be invented. And I'll give you an example. Women represent over 51% really as consumers of tech, but we always see this image of young guys in tech. One niche that's exploding across the world is esports. Mm -hmm. And when we think of esports, we think, oh, oh, we just gonna sit and play video games. No, women are also empowered and need to fill that gap of esports. So my now embrace passion is academic esports. And women need to be in there. And this is beyond the first shooter. We need esports across all disciplines, all area. And that's the gap that's missing in terms of women having a voice in esports. That's great. I have one more last question from the chat if you have the time. So yes. what do you say to people who uh, are wondering why we need to get more women in tech and not let women choose what they want to do? So why is this uh, huge discussion around women in tech if women don't want to go into tech? 
What do you reply to that? Oh, yes. You see the smile on my face? And yes. they do want to go into tech. They trying to beat down the glass ceiling in tech. But why? It's diversity. It's the thought process. It's things that when we come together, if you didn't think of it, maybe I would think. And think of just a male gender technology society. Oh my gosh. It's not to say that we all think others. You see how I'm smiling. I'm here to say women bring to the table a whole new perspective regarding the use of tech, the purpose of tech, and how we can utilize tech. And I'll give you a quick example that will leave you thinking. There is coming up a smart diaper. Go ahead and go, a smart diaper? Yes, where if the baby wets, the diaper will communicate and even send a message to the mom, the father, the caregiver. So let's take that tech. I'm pleased to share with you that technology crosses all globes and area because we all have hospitals, we all have senior citizens, and we all have a need, whether it's now or later, where we might have to wear some type of protection. You might not call it a diaper, but you might call it a protection where you're in a hospital. And if you have an accident or you need help, guess what will happen? You will have smart protection diapers or whatever that will call the nurse, the doctor, your caregiver to say, please come change me. The importance, you now reducing bed sores. You're now giving people back their self-fulfilling need to be taken care of. So I leave you with that. By the way, a woman thought of that. Yeah, because this is so closely linked to the roles that women traditionally have taken on. This is so close to caregiving and somebody who has never uh, provided care to a baby or an elderly person could never think of something like that. So the, I think this is a perfect example to, to think about. Thank you so much, Dr. Melton. And now I get to sit back and listen and learn. Yes, please, thank you. And uh, to all of you, don't forget to keep notes. Uh, about every initiative, every best practice that you hear and uh, maybe rings a bell. Because as I said yesterday and earlier uh, in the day today, uh, afterwards we are going to split into working groups and use all the knowledge and the insights and the ideas we have got in order to create our own initiatives and our, our own prototypes. And who knows, we may see some of those uh, get implemented over the next few months or years in Greece as well. So I would now like to welcome uh, Rebecca de Sancho Mayoral. Did I say that correctly, Rebecca? <laughs> you did. Thank you, Stella. Oh, thank you. Me. Yeah. The, for Greeks, it's easier to pronounce Spanish names. Thank you. Yeah, so, so true. So true. Thank you so much. We are looking really forward to hearing what you have to say about your uh, best practices from your organizations. And I will get back with some questions later after you finish. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the invitation. Um, let me sh start with the presentation on my side. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, first of all, I would like to, to start by thanking the, you, the, the organizing and the Power Forum, Stella. And uh, yeah, well, I couldn't start with a better uh, speaker uh, before me, Melton, Dr. Melton. And um, here. Ah. Yes. Okay. Mm 
Is it coming now? saying the why, why I'm here. So since um, I'm, I remember um, arriving in, in Brussels 14 uh, years ago, I've been passionate and advocate for gender matters and uh, volunteering as much as I've done it also professionally. I'm previously working on the internationalization of startups and SMEs and working on uh, empowering uh, women entrepreneurs and uh, bringing more women innovators and women in tech always uh, working on, on that portfolio. And in my current position, as uh, you introduced me, Stella, before, I'm working for the European Innovation Council Fund. So it's the investment fund of the European Commission for deep tech and uh, breakthrough innovations. Um, since I started, uh, we uh, years ago in the previous pilot, we went from uh, having, let's say, 8% of women-led companies in the pipeline to increase to uh, larger numbers like 37%. Uh, but as I will uh, point it out later, sometimes we we miss these women and uh, it becomes a gap as the, the previous speaker was saying in deep tech this is the place where we are still lacking behind and we need to make more efforts for emerging technologies to have more women innovators so yes yes okay so we'll start with um, the actions for female-led companies that we have uh, in place and um, some of the best practices that, that we have. It's, um, well, um, in the European Innovation Council uh, work program in 2021, we have a specific uh, package uh, that is called Women Tech EU, uh, an initiative to fund uh, women innovators and to provide them also with mentoring. We have also worked on a leadership program for women-led um, CEOs and other roles within the companies uh, with coaching and mentoring. And I will explain a bit uh, further on. Uh, we also have the prize for women innovators. And one on another action that it was really relevant to get more women in the pipeline uh, was to set a prioritization, um, let's say a target to have uh, around 40% of women invited to uh, one of our programs that is the EIC accelerator for the just for the interviews and by uh, okay sorry i didn't know can you see it now Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. So as I was saying, um, we introduced this target just to pinpoint and put the, the gender lenses because we, we were coming, as I was saying, from an 8% of women companies in the pipeline, women-led companies, and we managed to increase that portfolio of companies. And um, yeah, as well, we aim to have even a higher target of 50% of women um, in what we call our structures of the European Innovation Council, uh, either in the board or either in other activities, as it could be like a panel of evaluators or, or experts. So it is, um, um, let's say, um, global uh, gender lens that we put a focus, and we want to include also the gender dimension in relevant topics in across the um, research and innovation area. So it's uh, it's an effort um, that we we have put in place, and with this, how do we do it and intend to do it for the next years? Is to have a gender and diversity working group. 
and uh, we are piloting this advisory board um, with the object and innovation investments. No, me too. Rebecca, are you with us? You need to unmute yourself. You need to unmute yourself because we can't hear you. Um, sorry, everyone, we are having some technical glitches. We'll find a way to... Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. there. Great. Yeah, there was a problem with the connection. Sorry for that. No worries. Okay, I'm trying to share with you. Yes, so, so as I was saying before, um, we went uh, from um, yeah this uh, pipeline of women, um, but what we realized is that we the ones who receive the grant funding um, at much larger than the ones who receive uh, blended finance. What does it mean? That when we scale up a company and uh, the company starts uh, yeah, scaling up and getting equity from other investors, we lose women on the path. So we need to put in, in place uh, measures to tackle that gap, that is the investment gap. Uh, we have some examples and um, yeah, in one of the programs that uh, we have that is uh, also in the investment side, um, where we find that uh, in Nofin equity, for instance, 20% uh, of these beneficiaries were female uh, CEOs. Uh, or we have other examples, as I mentioned, the SME um, warranty in Nofin. So just to give you some examples of good practices where we managed to have 50% uh, of uh, CEO being a female CEO. But then when we get to venture capital firms, um, uh, women-led um, venture capital, the representation is around 5.6%. Um, so this is something we need to focus and everyone needs to do more to have, as the previous speaker was saying, more role models. Um, because it will be the only way that we get more funding uh, for women-led companies and women innovators. Um, in one of, as I was saying, in one of the initiatives that we have, the Women Leadership Program of the European Innovation Council, what uh, we aim to do is to create this community to uh, enhance the networking uh, between uh, women, but also to create a support network to help them scale up their ideas and the innovations. Uh, what is exactly the AIC um, in Women Leadership Program is um, a program that is funding projects and companies within the portfolio. I'm just giving you some examples for those who doesn't know it. I can send all the details. Uh, for uh, companies that are scaling up, it's called Accelerator, Pathfinder, Transition, and the one I specifically mentioned, tackling uh, directly targeting women tech EU. Um, we also have others who didn't make it to the final funding, but we have them in our records and we want to support them as well to help them scale up their innovations and their ideas. Um, both 
uh, women are either in companies or are in research uh, groups that they have the objective to go to markets. So we are always uh, talking about the final idea to bring your ideas to, to the market. What do we uh, do with uh, this program? It's basically uh, to provide training, individual coaching and mentoring. As I said before, it's uh, potentially based on the networking and the visibility. And uh, well, this <laughs> in a personal, on a personal note, uh, me that I have participated in many um, yeah, um, groups or women um, organizations, I believe very much that these initiatives are really crucial because it, this is where um, you can find other peers and you can learn from there and also to get inspired and motivated to, 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 to go for more. Um, on the impact, this is at the end of the day, what we are um, trying to do is to have more impact. Um, on the European Innovation Council as a whole, as uh, just to recap what, what I had been uh, saying, we want to have more women-led companies, but we also want to have more women aspiring at succeeding in uh, leadership positions. And again, going back to the previous speaker, that's what we uh, need to have. We need to have more role models, either on the innovation side, on the, uh, the entrepreneurial side, but also um, being leaders and showing um, showing up, um, and it's crucial to to have them and uh, to bring them to to our events, but also to present them to the outside world. Um, and again, on the um, side of investments, there's a lot to do. There is one program of the European uh, Commission that it's uh, the Invest EU, and it will be funding uh, large investments um, in many areas, and um, and also what uh, the one I represent, the European Innovation Council Fund, the investment fund. Um, we need to have a way to measure those results. So how can we do it? The only way is to introduce um, some performance indicators like key performance indicators. And we are now discussing this. Um, and I'm, I'm sure in a few years, we can bring it to you and see the, the evolution of how introducing measures can have an impact and a result in the long term. Um, it will be the only way to have more women-led companies, more women receiving uh, funding, and uh, more women in leadership positions uh, being, uh, it could be the CEO, the CTO, or the CFO. Uh, but as well, and I want to stop here very much, is on fund managers uh, and investors. Because if we don't have this representation as uh, we could see from the previous number, and I could give different statistics in Europe, US, they are very similar. We need to have women also in the investment committees and on those places where decisions are being made. So we, um, our objective is also to target institutional financial intermediaries and final recipients, so uh, the whole spectrum of the investment to have um, an impact um, in the funds uh, received by uh, these uh, women innovators and women in tech. And um, with this, I very much uh, would like to say that uh, as everyone that is here in this uh, power um, conference, uh, sometimes it feels like this is a small drop in the middle of an ocean. And, uh, but I'm sure that as a community, as an ecosystem, we all can better support and scout those female funders who need the right connections, the right networks, the skills, uh, the funding, and uh, in order to scale up their ideas and to have a, an impact in, uh, in our society. So yeah, with that, I would like to, to thank you and I would take up the Thank you so the much. Questions. I'm really sorry for the troubles of the connection. Don't worry about that. We managed everything fine. I have uh, two questions on the chat I would like to ask you. And one is, have you encountered any resistance 
around these initiatives you have taken? Have you seen uh, people saying that uh, this is, you know, positive discrimination and that uh, we don't need to talk about female entrepreneurship or that we don't need, you know, any, any initiatives around that? Yeah, thank you. That's, uh, of course, <laughs> this has been uh, very much on the table. Um, I would like to say that we always refer to the merits and to the assessment of the proposal. So there will always be a threshold. And whenever the threshold was uh, having the same, um, yeah, the same scores, and this could be the prioritization moment. So we wouldn't undermine quality because that's the question that arises. Uh, but we, what we, this would can be a continuous conversation in another conference and in other panels that you had. Uh, we need to create these actions. As long as I've been um, myself uh, volunteering in women's organizations, in other topics, and now in uh, entrepreneurship and also in funding for, for women um, in tech and uh, women innovators, I believe that this is the only way to go. Because if you uh, us as stakeholders and institutions that can lead uh, others to follow us, we don't do it, uh, we will never change it. Um, so I will stick with the, with the reply that this doesn't undermine quality and that we need to, uh, to start from somewhere, even um, having more women in uh, boards of uh, directors. And this, I see that is still uh, very much uh, lagging behind. Um, how, um, if you don't point it out, it will always stay the same. And uh, Uh, I think a lot, a lot of diversity that we have. Uh, so yeah, yeah. And this ties uh, beautifully with my next question, which was, who is responsible to design and implement, and do, who has the right to design and implement this kind of initiatives? Because is it? you know, institutions uh, like the EU or uh, uh, different um, governments that need to implement these initiatives? Is the civil society organizations? Is it the incubators or corporations? Whose role is it to take a step and, and try to solve the, this problem, this quiz? Yeah. Um, well, I think we, we need to align ourselves in the, the objectives that we want to, to achieve, that's for sure. But I very much believe that if uh, we don't do it from the institutions and international organizations, um, it's going to be very difficult to bring uh, the bottom-up approach. Um, I think it's from uh, what I know, it's coming from all aspects. And uh, I think there is a momentum. It wouldn't have been like this years ago. Um, where we even didn't want to talk and discuss about these issues and these gaps. So I think in that sense, uh, we are far away from the solution, but I believe we are on, on the path to it because we wouldn't even enter in, into questioning um, what I was saying before uh, on the funding or on the structures that give and provide this funding, uh, that there is no female representation or less than 10%, let's uh, mm. put it like this. So if we are now questioning, I think this is the, the right moment. And I very much believe uh, being in an uh, international organization and public uh, body uh, that we need to lead by example. And for that, we have in place at the EU, as you were asking, um, yeah, we have um, gender equality uh, strategy. We, uh, and this strategy builds in different areas. Um, the one I've been uh, talking about is um, Horizon Europe, and the program is in research and innovation. And um, yeah, and it um, it's um, leaking all the structures, I would say, that you can imagine, because there is a task force at the level of uh, the, um, commi in the commission of uh, the president von der Leyen. So the, the support comes from the top. And this is very important. As much as you can bring the support uh, from the bottom-up approach, it's good because then you will have factions and ideas 
So I, I really encourage also the civil society and other actors to come with ideas uh, to bring the solution uh, to the table. But if you don't have the support from the top, it's going to be very difficult. So true. Do you have any success stories to share uh, from, you know, women entrepreneurs who have benefited from uh, from the programs and, you know, have thrived? Yeah. Um, yeah, I could have presented some, but just from the back of my head, uh, I was in a panel in uh, December and uh, I remember a French company. Uh, and I'm struggling to, to remember the name, but it will come. It's in food tech and uh, finding uh, alternative ways uh, uh, to yeah to feed us uh, with the insects uh, this company <laughs> yes i see Do I like this? <laughs> Do I like this? <laughs> yes <laughs> um, this company received funding and there are several i went very fast but there are several ways to receive funding so you you can have the grant the uh, I would call it uh, not a small money, but uh, it will be smaller than what you receive in other um, investment um, tranches. So you start with this, then this company received um, another um, blended finance, so receive um, yeah, equity. And uh, thanks to the support of uh, the European Union and other investors that came in, because what we do uh, by being an institutional investor is to bring other investors as well. So they co-invest. And uh, what uh, we don't want to disrupt the market. We just want to finance what the market wouldn't do. So we, we bring them together. And in the case of uh, this company, I was checking uh, lately and uh, yeah, they, they were really scaling up very quickly and the valuation of the company, I cannot remember, but if we were talking about millions, it could, it's going towards billions. So yeah, that's uh, one of the, the ways to, Odegu is the CEO and um, yeah, it's it was very, very nice to see this this evolution. We have, uh, yeah, plenty of examples like this because once um, we start funding, um, the company, uh, thanks to this initial funding, can scale up, then go to market, and uh, yeah, and then can bring more investors. And this is really interesting what you say because I can see a pattern here um, with what uh, Dr. Melton mentioned before about the caretaking innovations and uh, we have a food tech innovation here and I think these examples tie uh, really well uh, the experience that women bring because of the social roles. There's stereotypical roles sometimes but these are for 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 the time being what we have and they tie it to this great you know innovative culture and and the skills they have and the tools they have and i think this creates really beautiful and really useful things i don't know about the insects i'm not sure about the, the, that yet but <laughs> we'll give it some thought Thank you so much, uh, Rebecca. I hope you are all keeping notes because, uh, as I said before, we are going to put all this into practice uh, later in the day. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you uh, again. Sorry for the presentation that it got a bit blocked and uh, happy to share with you any links of our programs. And I really would like to take these two seconds to empower all the women uh, that are hearing us and to apply for the funding because it's very rewarding when you see finally these uh, percentages increasing and um, I'm sure we will uh, we will get there pushing all together. That's so important what you say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. So I will be now uh, welcoming and giving the floor to Eva Salti. Uh, who uh, will uh, talk to us about another best practice. Eve is the Senior Director of Microsoft Azure AI Platform. I never know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Eve, hello. Hi, how are you? Great Very to be here. Fine. Thank you. So the floor is yours and uh, we can't wait Great. to hear what you have to share with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me to the event. Uh, let me uh, see if I can find my deck to share. Uh, 
Uh, nope. One minute. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, I just can't find my deck for some reason now. This is odd. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, no. So there's, let me just give me one minute. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I found it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, let me see. Can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. Oh, well, ha that's half of the work. <laughs> Great. So again, thank, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really, really excited to be here uh, sharing a little bit about my personal journey and um, a best practice that I invite you all to participate afterwards. So a little bit uh, about myself first. Um, as you can tell from my name and my accent, I'm from Greece. I grew up and uh, I was born and grew up in Greece and I left in my 20s, came in the US and I've been in the US working and living for the past 25 plus years. I started my career in startups, uh, which was very exciting. It's a great space to kind of like, you know, try to do a lot of things and have a lot of roles and wear a lot of hats at the same time. Um, which was very, very hel helpful because it helped me kind of like develop uh, different muscles that I was able to exercise and evolve in the uh, other car career uh, stages that I had. And then I started at, my at, at, at Microsoft. I did a lot of different things. The good thing about working in a large company is that you can try and rotate through different roles, which is really cool. Uh, so I did product management, product marketing. I did sales. Um, I work in pub, pub, public sector, uh, I was in services, and then I was recruited by, by the Google Cloud organization. It was kind of like three or four years ago, right, where it was um, start, start, starting to take shape, and they wanted someone with enterprise type of experience to um, really help them bootstrap this. And uh, after we did that, I returned to uh, the Microsoft team. AI is like a personal passion of mine, and I see that uh, it has lots of different uh, applications. Uh, so I'm excited to be back in a, in a leadership role that allows me to, A, hire more diverse uh, uh, individuals and experts to help us with this initiative, but also be part of the motion of the initiative to um, integrate AI into the everyday pro pr products and services that uh, we're, we're experiencing, both at a personal level and also as a biz business. Also, at a personal level, I'm very passionate about two things, and you'll see that uh, in the presentation uh, later on. One is around STEM and how do we uh, really help um, and incentivize uh, women and underserved uh, groups to uh, really join STEM areas. Uh, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, especially the T in, in, in STEM is underrepresented. And we have a huge opportunity there to invite uh, um, individuals that, you know, did not know that uh, this was a career path in the past um, and, uh, uh, and join this uh, area. Also, I'm very passionate about supporting and enabling and powering up uh, female found, fa founders. I'm on the board of an organization called We Global Stu Studios, and we're gonna talk about it because I wanna share that as a best practice and invite all of you to be part of it. And my personal mantra is being a lifelong lear learner. 
um, throughout my career and even now, I always try to learn something new, whether it's a language, a skill, develop a, a particular you know interest. And I think this is a great way to keep up with everything that is cha- cha- changing um, and also meet very interesting pe- pe- people in the meantime. <laughs> So I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, statistics that we see around IT. Uh, As you know, I mean, this is not specific to the US, although these numbers are US numbers, but I've been doing a lot of work uh, um, with groups in Europe and uh, these numbers are, you know, probably the same, if not uh, um, greater outside of the US. Um, so the reality is that, uh, I mean, these are a lot of num- numbers, but uh, the gist of it is that we, or, although we have women that have the right skills or they are, you know, uh, have the right uh, level of, of experience around te- technology, the reality is that they are not really entering the workplace uh, whether they are, you know, keeping, they're, they're not, um, you know, uh, continuing in that um, uh, working path, they are not really expanding into a leadership role. So, A, I think the pro- problem is that we don't have enough uh, women en- engineers. Uh, we don't have um, other underrepresented groups uh, as part of the kind of like computer science or overall IT space. So if you're starting now, I think this is an area to con- consider. So um, groups and, and startups that um, uh, are IT ba- based uh, have higher val- valuations. Uh, there is a shortage of the, you know, female uh, pers- pers- perspective and um, the voice that we need. And I think, you know, this is an area that, uh, you know, if you are just start starting now, it's a great um, uh, area to consider. Also, we don't see a lot of women uh, that are visible lead leaders in areas of STEM in general. Uh, we see more in middle man- management and maybe in early stage of their car- careers. But then as we go up the rank, uh, they're either outnumbered by uh, men or they're not represented in the right way. So I'm hoping that with this initiative and, you know, all of us now really being passionate about this area, that we can change that. Because I have been talking about this for the past five years, and uh, I don't want to talk about this anymore. (laughs) We know that uh, women have the right skills. We know that, uh, you know, we have the right education, that we have uh, passion for innovation. And we just want to make sure that uh, we find the right resources, we find the right support, we find the right advocates so that we can uh, really showcase what we can bring. A couple of things that I've seen working with star- startups and uh, founders in the past, like I would say 10 years is, um, and again, these are US num- numbers, but I'm assuming that these are equivalent across the board, is that uh, the challenges, if I had to summarize them, is across lack of capital and cash flow for these com- com- companies, especially if they're scaling up. I think it's easy to uh, come up with a pro- prototype with a minimum viable pro- product in order to get the initial seeding and the initial funding. But then when we want to scale the company up, when we want to expand, when we want to you know, go out of the MVP and really uh, expand it into a you know, fully bootstrapped product or service, this is where we see a lot of the issues. And uh, the issue is that a lot of these uh, seeding companies, a lot of the accelerators, the VCs are run by men. 
So I think there is an inherent bias when it comes to female-led com- companies and how they get funded. Uh, what are the criteria that um, people are using to prioritize or to evaluate the work that they do and to invest uh, in them? The second area is around marketing and advertising. And uh, this is really interesting because I started in this area and I'm very passionate uh, about it. It's very, it's half of the work is getting the work, uh, the word out, uh, breaking through the noise, really finding the right audience, uh, you know, and uh, honing in the persona that will be your buyer persona, your influencer persona, and really investing time in uh, not only working around uh, the top of the funnel, creating the awareness you need and uh, the consideration, but also towards the adoption and advocacy, which you need in order to maintain uh, your position in the market. And also, I think uh, in the U.S. in specific, um, we see issues to access to federal funding, federal contracting. Um, There are grants that are written in a certain way or have specific uh, um, verbiage or uh, limitations that uh, uh, disempower or, um, you know, doesn't don't really allow for women uh, to either apply or be su- successfully funding. So how do we change that? Uh, a couple of, like, I try to summarize a couple of things that uh, I've seen su- 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 successful startups uh, have. So I just wanted to take a minute and go through 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 them. Again, I don't think this is groundbreaking. If you're already in the business, if you're already taking the time and have a passion and you're doing this, you know this more than anyone else. But I wanted to put it out there based on what I see in the market. The first thing, which sounds really easy, it's having a clear vision. So having a very specific solution to a very specific problem. Pro- And it sounds simple, but a lot of times it's very hard. I find it hard for people to uh, really um, specify and have clarity around what they're solving for and where are they striving and who is the product or the service for. The second piece is around uh, is connected to that uh, to having clarity around a strong vision is really identifying where you fit in the overall marketplace in the overall industry. So identify that big market oppor- uh, opportunity. You might have an uh, an idea that is really great and breakthrough, but if there is no market for it, then it won't make a difference. Also, it's really important. Because life is too short, right? <laughs> and especially after COVID now, everybody is reassessing their values and what makes them ha- happy. Um, it's really to apply your own personal passion. Uh, if uh, you're really excited about a certain area and you're going to be spending a lot of time um, because it's really hard having your own biz- biz- business and taking this risk and really cultivating it, uh, it's, it really helps if uh, you're in an area that you're really, really passionate about. The other piece is around calculated risks. Uh, I really, uh, as I say in the, um, the following points, I really believe that if you don't fail, you haven't tried enough. So taking risks and really coloring outside the lines, I think, is, a, is always a good idea. But not taking unnecessary risks because, you know, if you're a small company with limited resources, you want to make sure that you really are calculating the gives and gets of a particular this, this decision. So taking that calculated risk helps you really push the envelope and evolve what you're doing without really jeopardizing the overall vi- vision and operations. The other one, of course, it's to be confident in yourself and your idea. I've seen women really breaking down when it comes to uh, presenting in front of VCs or in front of uh, a tech of this, you know, a group of decision makers that will evaluate whether they're worthy or, or not. Half of the work is really believing in what you're doing and being confident and being a lady boss about it. 
Um, the other thing uh, that I do it in my personal, that I always, you know, it's a personal um, kind of pra practice, if you will, for me is to fail often and, and learn fast and move on. Uh, if we haven't really failed, it means that we haven't really tried, that we really haven't kicked the tires. So uh, really making sure that we are really turning that uh, mis mis mistake, that fall, that oversight into a best practice for us to really move for forward is, is really key. And the other one is focus on re results, right? What is the impact? What is the result? And this becomes really important in evaluating and having a clear kind of conviction about the valuation of the com com company and how not to dilute this. So I want to share with you kind of like a best pra practice. Um, as I said, I'm on the advisory board of We Global Stu Studios. It's a full-stack innovation uh, sen sen center. It's um, headquartered here in uh, Los, Los, Los Angeles, but we have partnerships and resources uh, with, um, in collaboration with groups across the world. And we'd love to extend that to, our, uh, to this group in Greece. Our commitment is to really power up uh, uh, female founders' vision and uh, the development and the launch of that vi vision. Uh, we want to support uh, female-led uh, uh, companies that are creating either tech-enabled products or ser ser services or um, products and services that are being governed by a progressive diversity uh, 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 agenda. And we do this in, uh, in multiple ways. Uh, this is modeled after uh, a, a stu, you know, kind of like the standard ho Hollywood stu studios that you have here in uh, LA. And that means that we are a full stack uh, innovation center, meaning that we're taking uh, startup owners from uh, pre-seeding stage where they have an idea, a vision, and you know they're looking for guidance, for advice, for kind of like hands-on uh, support on how to expand that vision, how to present it, how to create a SWOT analysis, how to create a, biz, a business plan. Uh, and we do it across multiple uh, areas. We have um, an online pla platform that um, these founders can use to network, to share their best practices, but also to connect with uh, uh, really unique uh, training around leadership and biz, biz business. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, content around uh, how to find your founders, you know, kind of like DNA, how to develop yourself as a lead leader, how to really start to bootstrap your company in terms of financials, in terms of uh, presentation, in terms of like, you know, business planning. We have lots of resources and tools that we invite everyone to take, to take advantage of. Um, our, the advisory board is all women, which really helps because uh, I would say 70% of them are um, business owners them, themselves. The rest of us are executives on the IT side uh, and, you know, uh, you know, across multiple in industries and we're very hand, hands on. So the, the advisory board is basically very active um, in the pla platform, making sure that we have the right uh, interaction uh, and working hand in hand with uh, this bis business owners to help them across uh, every step. Also, we have we provide um, access to funding sor sor sources. We work with uh, uh, local and international uh, VCs and accelerators, and we provide this kind of matching, if you will, um, between the funding source and the business owner. Uh, we also provide um, a lot of guidance around how to think about the company in long term in terms of growth, and we also 
um, have enterprise level par partnerships with a lot of companies that support um, the content, the guidance and the funding aspects. We have different tracks. Uh, as I said, we start with uh, the DNA of the founder. We want to make sure that we develop the leadership skills, the personal development, the personal value prop, the mind of body balance, because it's really cri critical to start with that um, uh, when you're a biz business owner. We also have a track that supports uh, female founders around uh, legal issues, finance, uh, business strategies. I said how to build a business plan, how to find and hone in that market uh, pro product fit. We also have a track around product development and we partner with um, large uh, car, uh, com companies for a series of trainings around how to think about the, the design, the architecture, uh, the user interface of the product and the service that you're building. We have a very talented group of uh, individuals that help on the sales and marketing side, how to think about your branding, your PR, how to really um, kickstart your sales strategy, how to think about your dis distribution plan. And also uh, there's an operations uh, track around uh, you know shipping delivery customer service how to start thinking about your supply chain so it's really end to end whether you're starting with an idea and a vision all the way to when you are you know in your second and third round of fund funding um, and you can visit the website, see what it's all about. There is a media center with useful art, uh, articles. There is an information hub. You can log in um, there. We do events, uh, online events, face-to-face uh, -face events. This is a great opportunity to network with other female founders, with VCs, with, uh, with accelerators. We provide resources to other funding sources like angels. And there are a lot of different uh, opportunities to either mingle with like-minded man, uh, entrepreneurs or learn something new that will help your company. So I don't want to take more time. I want to invite everyone to visit uh, uh, We Global Stu Stu Studios. Here is my email if you have any uh, questions. And uh, here is my LinkedIn and, 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 and tweet, Twitter handles. I'd love to hear from you. I want to extend an invitation to all of you to the plat platform. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much. This was a great presentation and a great initiative, uh, if I may say. I like the fact that um, this was by planning, not by uh, by chance. Uh, Dr. Melton uh, talked about the digital skills uh, gap, oh. and then uh, Rebecca told uh, and talked about the financing gap, and you are talking about the entrepreneurial skills uh, that women founders need. So I think we have covered quite a, a ground here uh, in terms of uh, what we can do in order to boost female entrepreneurship in uh, in Greece and not just in Greece. Uh, I only have one question for you if you have some time uh, to spare. And it is, uh, do you do you have as a priority to be um, beyond gender, uh, be inclusive in, in the recruitment of the of the people that this program benefits? I mean, how do you ensure and if if this is important to you, uh, to ensure that this program reaches uh, women from different backgrounds and uh, that this program represents what what women have to face in society according to their different you know identity um, elements that they, they, they carry with with them. That's a great question. The reason why this uh, initiative was born was because we were seeing that uh, women were not getting access to the funds that they needed in order to bootstrap their, their companies. So initially, and that's why we over-indexed on the female founder point of view, uh, because we wanted to level the plain, plain field. We want to pro provide that equity. Um, 
mid, you know, I mean, uh, outside of whether, you know, we want to expand this to um, other groups, I think that's always a possi possibility. I want to make sure that we stay true to our original goal of like, you know, really pro providing that equity, because I think um, other entrepreneurs have access to a lot of different sor sources, uh, source uh, funding sor sor sources, and women always fell short. So to, to the extent that we can keep um, uh, this pri priority as kind of like our North Star, I think we're very open to uh, inviting and uh, evaluating and working with uh, all star, star startup uh, owners that are kind of in, in that pre-seed or early stage uh, in their uh, com com company and helping them, you know, throughout the process. That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Eve. Thanks for being here with us today and for sharing all these uh, great insights. Um, I want to turn it back to you, to the plenary, because we are now ready to take a break. And after the break, we will be ready to go into our working groups. So I would like to, you know, uh, wrap up and just describe a little bit the procedure that we will be following. So we will be taking a break until five o'clock and if you are in Greece, and then um, you can choose from the working groups, uh, the rooms that you will be finding in the chat. Uh, you can see the links there and you can follow uh, either link uh, in order to get, into, get, get into the working group that mostly sparks your interest. Um, different working groups will uh, tackle the issue of the uh, digital skills gap and the financing gap and the boosting of entrepreneurial skills. Um, if your group decides to go after um, some issue different than the one of the title of the working group, that's fine. Uh, you will be gathering for one hour, uh, five o'clock to six o'clock, and you will be working on your own ideas. You will be drawing um, from the things that you've heard today, from the things you have tried or seen in the past, working or not working. And you uh, will be called to develop some sort of a presentation for your initiative that you are going to share with, uh, with the plenary back here uh, at, at six o'clock. So we are really excited to hear what you will come up with. Uh, we are very hopeful and we hope that um, one or more of these initiatives uh, will be so good that we will uh, definitely want to try and implement it or you will want to implement it. So um, let's take a break and let's uh, go back to our working groups and try to boost female tech entrepreneurship in Greece. Thank you so much for being here with us.